What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Demsec. So we had the suggestion from Disavowed on our Discord server to do a video about Tor and explain more in detail about the networking, what to do, what not to do, the reasons behind uh, using it and why we should use it. So Tor works a little bit differently from the regular internet. When you go to a website on the regular internet or the web as we call it, you jump through a bunch of routers to your destination and a lot of the time these routes are going to be the same every time unless there's some kind of weird load balancing or anything like that going on with tor the whole idea is that you stay anonymous and the way it does this is every time you start a tor session a different route is made to an exit node so if you try going to google.com through tor you do a different route every single time and the nodes that you hop through are called relays and as i mentioned before the ones that you come out of the tor network are called exit nodes so Tor has a number of usage, and anonymity is obviously the main one, but you can also just use it to change your IP address if that's something you need. Also when you're going through Tor, each hop is essentially a layer of the onion, so Tor obviously stands for the onion router. So as you create a route through Tor, you get the public keys of each hop in that sequence, and you encrypt your data with those almost like an onion, so you end up with your data and these three or however many layers of encryption depending on how many hops you're going through. And at each hop, a layer of that gets pulled off until you reach the destination. So there is a bit of an issue here. If you get to the end of this and you go into the clear, clear internet and you're not using HTTPS, for example, the end node can read everything that's going on. But if you're using a hidden service, which we'll cover later on, your data is only ever encrypted at the destination so it's far more anonymous and it's obviously a bit safer to stay within tor than it is to exit tor so tor nodes can be set up by anyone which is great however what about if a law enforcement wanted to set one of these up which we're all sure they do so then what happens so in the case of this and there has been actually a number of uh attacks like this documented where people overload the network with their nodes and it is possible to perform some kind of traffic correlation attacks with this. Luckily it is random every time. You can pick which routes you go through but the default setting is to pick random ones. So if you were to just spin up a node now and you were planning on being malicious, uh, realistically you're not going to get all that much traffic and unless you're an exit node, obviously because of the encryption uh, on each hop going through Tor, you're not going to see very much. That being said, Tor has actually taken steps to mi mitigate this. They now have guard nodes, which are essentially trusted nodes which your data can pass through. Um, there's also bridge nodes as well now, and uh, a, well, a bridge relay they call them. And with a bridge relay, it's essentially if you're on a network which blocks all uh, known Tor IPs, and it's quite easy to do because they're all publicly known. So a bridge node is essentially another system which is set up to almost allow you to get onto Tor. It's almost like a slip road almost, but it's a slip road that almost anyone can run. But to actually become a um, public relay or a public um, bridge even, Tor actually has to approve it. So now the Tor projects are taking a more active role in ensuring that these nodes are legitimate. So... They take steps to identify um, hosts which are doing strange things to your traffic and they have ways to do it to do that. They constantly test the network and especially te test exit nodes to make sure that they're not playing with any of the data or for example if you were downloading an EXE through Tor there is that potential that the exit node could run shelter on it or run a BDF proxy or anything like that. So they do take steps to ensure that everything going on there is legitimate but it's um yeah it's like anything else really you've just got to take it into your own hands so what if we was still paranoid and we thought that one of those nodes was still compromised would we be able to change the tor nodes so yeah of course in the in the tor browser itself you can actually click in the top left hand corner and uh essentially change your route through tor and it'll create a new uh, path through tor for you to go through so if you were particularly paranoid as Aaron mentioned you can change this at your will um, if you're actually using the tor.exe uh, binary or the tor binary on linux 
Um, it comes with a daemon as well, which you can, or a daemon if you want to call it that, but I call it daemon. Um, where you can actually send commands to it and have your uh, root update periodically. Um, so you could have it where it changes the root every 10 minutes, every 5 minutes. So you, you could even get it to the point if you wanted to program it where every single request is through a different um, path through Tor. So it's, it's completely up to you, really. So let's look at the full browser. So if we um, browser, let's see what it does. Okay, so it's just asking us if we want to connect. So I guess we can just go ahead and next. So this is the Tor browser, and we can there's there's not really much we can see on here. So we're just going to go to my IP dot is to see if our IP has changed. So you'll just have to take our word for the fact that this is not our real IP, and we're not going to show our real IP because mm, bad many people. of you DOSs, bad people, all of you, bad people, not all of you, because no, all all uh, of those. you, bad people. <laughs> judge, man. I reckon all of them are bad. Moving on. <laughs> now, if we click this little onion button up here, we can see the Tor circuit for this site. So this is where all of our traffic goes through and all of the different nodes that are have been set up. So we can click a new identity and click yes. And then if we do my IP... Oh, oh wow. My IP dot is to get a new IP. So there we go. So Tor is obviously an extremely powerful tool, as you've seen there. Just the ability to appear where you're not and no one be able to tell where your traffic's come from is extremely powerful. But it's not as simple as just being able to turn it on and be invisible. There are some concerns that you've got to think about. So you've probably seen in the news there's been many security concerns and many issues with Tor, which have been addressed by like the guard nerds and the bridges and all that kind of cool stuff. The way I see it, it's like any other tool. You've got to have a privacy conscious mind to actually use it safely. So as you saw then, when Aaron is using Tor, he doesn't resize the window. There are actually attacks out there where just by having the window maximized like that, it'll, it'll even give you, as Aaron's done right now, it'll give you a warning saying that it's not safe to do this because just having it fully maximized is, c can allow a website administrator to at least see what screen resolution you're using. And that ever so slightly makes the group of people they're looking at smaller. And there's all kinds of little things like this that can give away who you are or where you are and all this kind of stuff. Um, and another thing would be to not use a Tor circuit for too long. Um, if you use Tor day in, day out, just remember to change your Tor circuit. I know there's projects out there where you can use like a Raspberry Pi as a hotspot to go through Tor. Unless you're having it automatically update your circuit, it's pretty unsafe to have all of your traffic constantly going out the same way. So there's a number of different suggestions for staying safe on Tor, and I think Aaron's got one for us. So the first one's pretty simple and it's kind of common sense, but it's not to use any kind of account that would tie you down to a Tor connection. So for example, don't log into Facebook because they'll be able to find many things about you uh just yeah don't sign into anything uh or give well so you can sign into things but don't use anything that you would normally use that has any kind of your own personal information on yeah before we move on to the other suggestions obviously the best thing for tor is to run all of your traffic through it so if if you want to run all your traffic through it and it's required that you, you need to be anonymous or you just feel that you deserve your privacy then feel free to log into facebook but if you then use the same circuit to do something which you probably shouldn't do then that's where your problem arises and actually facebook do have their own um hidden service now so there is actually a safe way to stay inside of tor and log into facebook but then you mm. get into the argument that facebook yeah yep facebook yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, let's not yeah yeah i have many views on this <laughs> yeah I, I don't think i've ever used it and i don't think i ever will because it just scares me a little bit yeah although now um this is just going off topic a bit facebook actually have uh, the only 
uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's the Maximum Security SSL cert where it actually comes up in the URL bar. They have the only one that's been assigned to a Tor address. So it, it, it is legitimately the Facebook site, and you can prove that. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. Facebook. Another one that's pretty simple is to ensure you're using the strongest security settings possible in the Tor browser. So if Aaron goes to the little onion again and goes to, I think it says privacy settings. Security settings. Security settings then. Yeah. And ensure that this is on high. Which is on low by default. Yeah. And this just ensures that JavaScript, HTML5, Java, um, Flash, all that kind of stuff doesn't run because obviously that's all client-side code and it could go ahead and um, give away your actual IP address. So you've got that kind of trade-off where you shouldn't really run JavaScript and whatever through Tor, but there are ways to actually run everything through Tor, such as like a Wonix gateway. So an easy common mistake that can happen is that we accidentally paste a dot onion address into your normal Chrome or Firefox browser. This will allow your ISP to see what you're doing. So as we mentioned earlier in the video, the safest way I found to use Tor is to never leave the Tor network. And obviously this isn't completely uh, reasonable because there's a lot of stuff on the clear internet that doesn't have a hidden services address. That being said, you can make your own hidden services. So that's what I'm going to do now on Kali. But you don't need Kali, any Linux or even Windows system will do. So I'm just going to show that I have Tor installed. So I have to get install Tor. And in this case, I don't. So we'll just go ahead and install that. So with Tor installed, I'm just going to go ahead and ensure that I have a web server installed because all I want to host on here is a website. So I already have Apache installed. So let's go ahead and uh, edit the HTML file in there, just to make it a bit more interesting. So I'm just going to remove this and make a new one, because I'm too lazy to delete all of that. X.html, and we'll say hi, Aaron. So now what we can do is edit the config file for Tor. And that's uh, Etsy Tor Tor RC. And if we scroll down in here, you'll see a hidden services section right here. In our case, all we're going to have to do is uncheck both of these. So once we've done that, all we need to do is do service Tor restart. And then if we go to um, the folder that was mentioned in the config file, so var lib Tor hidden service. We'll have a file in here called hostname. So if I actually send this to Aaron now, I'll just make sure that Apache is also running, which it now is. If I give this link over to Aaron, he should be able to browse to it and see my hidden service. There we go. So you can see my message. And you can run almost any service through Tor. So you could run your SSH server through Tor, so it's unaccessible through Tor. Um, as you know, we have our uh, website available over a hidden service. And this is by far the um, most secure way to use Tor. And I would show you, but it's a bit difficult to actually log in and show you. If you're coming in through the Tor service to our site, we can't actually even see who you are. All we see is our own local host accessing the site. So it's good if you're very privacy conscious and don't even want us to know that you're on our site. So I hope this has given you a bit of a better insight into Tor. I know earlier in this channel's existence we did one on just how to use Tor, but as mentioned at the start, we did get a request to cover it in a bit more depth, I suppose. And I think once you start using Tor, setting up hidden services and all that kind of cool stuff comes next. And um, staying safe is definitely one of those things which you should know. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed. And um, I think Aaron's got something to mention. Yeah, it's just... Uh, we've had loads of people come to the forums, which is great. Uh, but yeah, we just thought we would show you, kind of, if you haven't already, come over to have a look and signed up yet. We just wanted to show you what it's like. Um, 
there's loads of things on there now. Got loads of people posting great things. Um, so yeah, uh, there's also a Discord server as well. If you haven't already checked it out, uh, got quite a few people on here. So yeah, you can come over and have a chat with us, or if you've got ideas, or if you need any help with anything, uh, we've got quite a few people to help. Uh, we can obviously message you as well and help you out. That's actually probably the best way to get a hold of us. For the longest time, I was like saying, come over to the forums, come over to Twitter, but Discord is almost like, it's just this constant thread of just interesting things. And like, I think last night or the night before, we were just talking about some cool Wi Fi hacking stuff. So, and it's just a big general discussion, really. No one's right, no one's wrong. It's just share ideas. You see screenshots getting thrown up here, links to talks that are interesting. It's just a good place to come if you're, I don't know, interested in hacking, I suppose. But I do ask that don't come over to ask for us to do anything for you because we'll just get ignored and probably get kicked off the server because yeah. this, this, yeah, this it, isn't it's a It's not for illegal service. stuff. It's not for, yeah. oh, can you hack my Facebook? Can you hack someone? How, how do I do this? How do I do that? Unless it is like... If it's a very, very particular question, which could not be assigned... So, yeah, if you, if you come over and you're blanket going to say, how do, I ha uh, how do I hack Facebook, that's just going to get blatantly ignored. I think no one in the Discord will even bother replying to it. And it's like that everywhere, because it, it's just... One, it's not a reasonable question, because then you implicate people like me and whatever in how to do that kind of stuff. But if you came over and said, how do I brute force passwords? How do I, what tool do I use for this? Then that's the kind of answers we can give because that's just off the cuff things that we can, I guess, answer. So that's it for this video. Give it a like if you liked it. Give it a dislike if you didn't like it. And lots of puppies and kittens will cry. Um, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Head over to the website. Head over to Discord, just follow us both on Twitter if that's what you want to do, and uh, we'll see you next week. Yes, soon.